Hello, welcome to the lab of physical systems. Today you are going to explore the electric and magnetic field in order to determine the ratio between the charge and the mass of an electron. Now that you are becoming a well-known and respectable superhero, you want to broaden your skills and to know better your colleagues and your enemies. You have been reading the adventures of Electro and Magneto, and you want to explore some of the electric and magnetic abilities that they have. This may help you to design better super gadgets. In this experiment, you will be studying the path of the electrons moving in a uniform electric and magnetic fields. With regard to the electric field, uh, electrons feel a force uh, due to the electric field which uh, depends on the intensity of the electric field and the magnitude of the charge and we can describe it mathematically this way. The electric force is equal to the charge that fills the electric field times that electric field and it is directed in the same direction. And the force created by the magnetic field on an electric charge that has a velocity is given by this expression. The charge of the electron, the velocity of the electron, and the, intensity, the magnetic field, the vector of the magnetic field. Q is the electric charge of the electron, V is its velocity, and B is the magnetic field. And the magnetic field is zero if the electrons are at rest, you could ask yourself what would happen seen from a different reference frame. And this is what Albert Einstein wondered and served as a sheet to derive the special theory of relativity. Looking back at this equation, the magnetic force depends on the cross product of the vector velocity and the vector magnetic field. This means that this force depends on the angle between these two vectors if these two vectors are perpendicular, something like this, this means that the sinus is going to be one, so we're going to have the maximum magnetic force. But if both vectors are parallel, there's not going to be any force. So if you have an electron flying in the same direction, so we have the magnetic field, this electron is not going to feel any magnetic force. But if it's traveling perpendicular, it will be feeling the force due to the magnetic field. For example, if the magnetic field is pointing out of the board and the electron is moving to the right, then following the right hand rule, we will have that the electron would be moving downwards because remember that it has a negative charge, so the right hand rule works for positive charges. We can generate an electron beam using an electron gun. In this device, we're going to apply an electrical current to, through a metal to heat it. By this, we make the electrons from the metal easily pulled out. So we are going to have the metal here, we will make a current go through here, it will be heated up, and then the electrons will be easily taken off from that metal. How? Well, we can then apply an electric field from here to here to accelerate those electrons, and that's how we obtain an electron beam. If V is the voltage that we apply to accelerate these electrons, the energy that they will have will be given by one half of mass velocity squared will be equal to the charge of the electrons multiplied by the voltage that we are applying. We have a beam of electrons and we make them go through a uniform magnetic field. The magnetic force will bend their trajectories and we can have the electrons move in a circular trajectory. Of course, this is going to be depending on what is the geometry, how we apply the electric field and how and where from we apply the magnetic field. If we make the electron go in circular trajectories, remember that in that case, there will be a centripetal force given by this, this would be the mass of the electron, the velocity squared divided by r, where r is the radius of curvature of the trajectory, the radius of the circle. You can compare this last equation with the magnetic force and the kinetic energy of the electrons and deduce a very interesting relationship, which is that the voltage is equal to one half of E over m, where E is the electric charge of the electron, m is its radio, uh, sorry, its mass, 
then multiply it by the magnetic field is square and the radius is square. Where in this relationship, you know, or you will see how you relate the voltage that you are applying, the magnetic field that you are applying, the radius of the trajectory, and two very fundamental and important constants in nature, which is the charge and the mass of the electron. You are going to generate a magnetic field using these coils by making a current go through it, to them, and the relationship between the magnetic field and the current uh, and the number of loops is given by this expression where the magnetic field is 9 times 10 to the minus 7, that's in the SI system, multiplied by the number of coils that we have here, the current, and S, which is just the radius of the coil. This arrangement gives the optimum uniformity of the magnetic field at the center. This ball contains the electron gun right here in the center, the electrons are ejected from back and they are accelerated thanks to a magnetic field that you will be controlling with this power supply, with the voltage of this power supply. The bulb contains a gas at low pressure. As the electrons move through the tube, they occasionally collide with atoms of the gas, transferring energy to them and leaving them in an excited state. Subsequently, the energy given to these atoms will be given off as light. So while the electrons themselves cannot be seen, we can see their motion through that emission of light of the atoms of this rarefied, this low pressure bulb. With this power supply, you are going to control the intensity of the magnetic field with the current and the velocity of the electrons with the voltage. Remember that the current is going through these coils and the voltage is the one that is uh, extracting the electrons from the metal. Before turning it on, be sure to have your instructor check all the connections and never go beyond 5 amps. Okay? Indeed, if you work between 150 and 200 volts you, and around 2 amps, you will see very interesting results. Let's turn it on. First, you want to explore the effect of the magnetic field and the velocity of the electrons on the radius of the trajectory. So we are increasing the voltage at this moment and due to having that electric field applied, you can see here the trajectory of the electrons going in a straight line because we don't have not applied the magnetic field yet. So let's apply a magnetic field and you will see how the trajectory is being curved until we can have a circle, a circular trajectory. In this experiment, you're going to play with three different variables, the magnetic field controlled with the current, the velocity of the electrons controlled with the voltage, and the radius. Follow all the checkout points and answer to all the questions in your report. Don't forget to write everything down and may the science be with you.